up the long ladder. The Enterprise becomes involved in two previously unknown Earth colonies' struggle for survival. Okay, this episode starts with Worf still dealing with his diarrhea from the Okana episode. Picard calls Riker and asks him if he can identify a sound that they received in a transmission. And after first misidentifying that it came from Fecan Galaga, recognize it. They determine it's actually an SOS signal from a 300 year old Earth Alliance originating from deep space. I have some questions about this. Why is it always just the captain who's doing the work? Especially after Picard says that Starbase had been studying the signal. You would think whatever could be discovered about it, they already discovered about it. He's not going to be able to add anything on his own. Meanwhile, Worf's heartburn has gotten the better of him, and Pulaski's trying to figure it out. It turns out it is the Klingon equivalent of measles. Pulaski covers for Worf to protect his dignity. Uh, Worf was um, just observing a Klingon ritual involving fasting. Tate and Picard are having this weird conversation that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter. Mariposa. The Spanish word for butterfly. Thank you, Data. I thought it might be significant, sir. It doesn't appear to be Data. No, sir. I thought it was going to come up later, yeah. They're trying to figure out what ship could be sending the signal. Data suggests looking up the manifest records, and Data mentions that some people at the time were seeking a return to a simpler lifestyle. Worf reveals some Klingon insight by thanking Dr. Pulaski by performing the Klingon tea service, which is drinking tea that basically kills you and reading love poetry while you do it. I like how he says that death is an experience best shared. It is a test of bravery, of one's ability to look at the face of mortality. It is also a reminder that death is an experience best shared, like the tea. What do you think about Pulaski hitting on Worf? See, that's where I wanted to see this episode go, but it didn't. There's always my fan fiction, though. I'm trying to think of a good name for your fan fiction. It'd have to be a, a Star Trek reference in the title. You cling on my heart. <laughs> <laughs> they get to the FICA system where the star is emitting huge flares that are going to hit the inhabited planet in a few hours. So Riker goes down to pick up the colonists, but he brings up a bunch of livestock and apparently a Celtic music group. Okay, at this point, the episode could go one way or the other. I specifically think of elementary Dear Data. This one could end in disaster, or it could turn out to be really good. The head of the colonists, Mr. Odell, is played by Baring Ingham, who I knew as Basil from The Great Mouse Detective. How the deuce did you know I was a doctor? A surgeon, to be exact. Just returned from military duty in Afghanistan. Am I right? <laughs> He's super over the top and goofy. Okay, Irish people in real life do not talk like that. I don't know if anybody out there realizes that because that's such a prevalent thing in freaking American movies involving Irish characters. But they don't, that is not an Irish accent. That is an exaggerated, stupid movie accent. And his character was so dumb. His performance was so stupid and over the top. I hated everything about it. Odell asks Picard if he would be interested in marrying his daughter Brenna. And we get some dumb season one music. I was hoping we were done with that. Uh, uh, would you be interested, sir? No. Oh, you're quite sure? Quite sure. Yeah. He's quite sure. At one point, they light a fire in the cargo hold because they need fire. It bothered me how the Enterprise crew doesn't do anything to help them adapt. It's an exact copy of what they did in the neutral zone. Riker meets Odell's daughter, Brenna, and doesn't seem to care at all that she's a complete bitch. <laughs> He just goes to show her where to supposedly wash her feet, and she immediately starts taking all her clothes off. I, this episode is so stupid. Well, it only gets worse. Patrick Stewart realizes how ridiculous this episode is and reacts accordingly. You just have to bow to the absurd. Odell asks Picard, yeah. Well, in all your travels, have you heard anything from the other colony? which apparently the crew forgot about, even though the manifest had all this high-tech equipment on it, and these people don't even know what a computer is. And off on the side, this is still going on. Being that Odell is a stereotypical Irishman, he goes to Worf and asks him about getting some alcohol. Good. With all the deleterious effects intact. Mm -hmm. As it should be. <laughs> I'm not saying this guy's a bad actor. His acting just doesn't fit the tone of the show and really stands out in this episode as being way too much. 
It fits the tone of the original series way more than it does this one. I still would have thought it was stupid. I want to make sure that people know how much I hated this guy. I think they got it. All the way, in the last 15 minutes of this entire episode, which is kind of weird, a pretty in-depth B-plot presents itself. The other colony is a group of clones that are about to genetically copy themselves out of existence. So they ask the crew to donate tissue samples to diversify the gene pool, to which they say no. The way they describe replicative fading doesn't make sense given real world cloning stuff. The problems that they're having are not problems that they should be having. When they first beam down, Riker says, Or if there is something damn odd going on here. What did you expect? It's a long lost Earth colony that hasn't had any contact with the Federation for over a hundred years. And then when they find out they're clones, they act really shocked. Clones. 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 Are clones that outlandish in the future? And during this whole thing, they put the first group of colonists completely off to the side. It's like they never even existed and we started an entirely new episode. The Mariposans zap Riker and Pulaski and use some weird syringes to extract DNA samples but not to Jordy, even though he's there. He even brings up how weird it was to the other two later. So what happened to you two down on Mariposa? Is everything all right? Is there any reason it shouldn't be? Yeah. If he had been a part of it, then nobody would be the wiser. The only reason they figure it out is because Jordy brings it to their attention. And then Jordy reveals he can tell when people are lying with his <laughs> visor. <laughs> yeah, that would be useful in a lot of other situations. Commander, with this, I can see better than your average person. Totally unnecessary and brings up way too many questions. Between him and Troy, they are like, truth squad, but they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't the Mariposans have gotten the same results with something less cartoonishly evil? Like saying, Hey, we need to check your blood to make sure you're not bringing any weird futuristic diseases with you. Worf had that disease going on. We want to make sure that we're okay. They find clone bodies of Riker and Pulaski, and Riker destroys them. So neither Riker, Pulaski, or Geordi have a problem with outright murdering the clones. I would think Pulaski, of all people, would say something like, even though we don't agree with it, they are alive now, and killing them would be tantamount to murder. But no, they just wipe them out. When the Mariposans ask for DNA from the people on the Enterprise, Picard speaks for them all when he says no. I mean, this is an Earth colony, not some weird alien culture. They don't even ask any of the other crew members or the other thousand people on the ship. Riker's quote is very self-centered. We certainly have a right to exercise control over our own bodies. He's not giving any of the other people on the ship that choice. He's making it for them. Pulaski then says, If they get an infusion of fresh DNA, in 15 generations, they'll just go back to the same problems. Okay, that's freaking 400 years. I would think that in 400 years, something would change by then. You are making the assumption that this brilliant scientific community will not come up with a solution on their own. Or use the transporter somehow. They could even use that to reset the DNA back to its original state or whatever. Because they already did that. So then to make things even worse, the crew decides to use the other group of colonists as cattle, also without asking them first if it's something they even want to do. I hate how they decide how not one, but two entirely different cultures have to do what they say, or else. Starfleet is nothing but a bunch of hypocrites, which we knew already. He is personally deciding that these people are less than normal people, and he should determine what happens to them, and keeps pushing and pushing without any new reasons after they've already both said no. And then... When reason fails, you'll resort to blackmail. Which he totally does! <laughs> what gives these assholes the right to decide for them? Especially given that the whole conflict of the second half is that the Enterprise doesn't want to do what these other people are trying to make them do. And then when Brenna, the strongest character, who has the only chance of refusing this, and she starts to refuse it, Picard blackmails her too! What a dick. This is going to work. These people will need your strength, your guidance. Oh, if you wish, you can stay on the Enterprise. We will drop you off at a starbase. You can leave if you want, but you're condemning your people to death. Oh. <laughs> 
The way Brenna talks about the Mariposan guy in charge, she seems to be attracted to him because he has money, but she's from a planet that was trying to get away from all this technology and civilization and stuff. But it doesn't seem like that planet even has anything like that. You would think she'd be attracted to somebody who had a strong leadership personality. Up the long ladder. Overall, I give this episode an F for f***ing stupid. Riker bangs a girl just because, which granted happens all the time, but in this episode it was particularly stupid. The cartoonish Irish people were incredibly grating. The clone stuff didn't make a lot of sense. The whole episode was dumb. Hard F. And Klingon's diarrhea never went anywhere. That's what they used to fuel their fire. After he made him the alcohol, he's like, Oh, do you have any kindling for us? And he's like, Hold on. Klingon <laughs> fertilizer is the best. <laughs> Kalos's shit burned for a thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, to eat the Kamrak is considered an honor. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a D minus. The A plot, a bunch of stereotypical goofy Irish people. The B plot, a nonsensical scientific clone thing. The dramatic tone shift and total discarding of everything on both sides was extremely jarring, and it did not help that it immediately fell back onto dumb writing and dumb decision making. But the worst thing for me was the way the crew treated both groups as nothing more than animals incapable of making their own decisions and then threatening them when they even tried. They even denied their own crew any choice in the matter. I did not enjoy it. The only part I liked was the scene off camera where Worf and Pulaski got it on. <laughs> yeah, this episode could have been so much better. 